Uh, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to present the Regulation of Providers of Building Works Bill 2021 to the Dáil here today. Many examples of building failure as a result of non-compliance with building regulations have come to light in recent years and indeed may continue to emerge over coming months and years. In the Government's plan for housing, housing for all, it set out an ambitious target of 300,000 new homes by the end of the decade to address our national housing crisis. As part of that plan, addressing the legacy of poor workmanship and regulatory failure while ensuring it never happens again has been a priority for the Government and for me as Minister. The establishment of an independent working group on defective housing was a key commitment in the programme for Government. And for many years, I and others, and many of my colleagues on both sides of the House, have been highlighting the plight of homeowners who have been left with the consequences of poor workmanship or indeed uh, the supply of, de of defective materials. I visited homes which had fire safety or structural defects in my own constituency and right across the country, and I've seen at first hand uh, the worry and stress that this has caused. It's relentless on these families. And as someone who was part of the negotiations of the programme for government, I was pleased, as I know many people were, to see a range of commitments set out in that programme for government in respect of how we would tackle the issue of housing defects. I have said time and time again that we must and we will grasp this nettle and give hope to these families. Government have not shied away from our responsibilities and since coming into office I have established the independent working group on defective housing as well as brought forward the enhanced defective concrete block scheme. The independent working group encompasses key stakeholders. I want to pay tribute to them both in my department, the local authorities, particularly the Department Owners Network and the Construction Defects Alliance and their members indeed. And they're playing a key role in this and comprehensively assessing the scale of the problem and outlining solutions. It will report to me in the coming months, that time frame is, 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 is for them to adhere to and I'll work with my colleagues in government to make sure that affected home and apartment owners are supported appropriately. I'm using the opportunity to again restate that here very clearly to the House. I would like to take this opportunity now to inform the House that the working group to examine uh, defects in housing will be launching online surveys in the next couple of weeks, seeking the views of homeowners, current or former, landlords, directors of owner management companies and indeed property management managing agents on their experiences of defects relating to fire safety, structural safety, water ingress in purpose-built apartment and duplex buildings constructed in Ireland between 1991 and 2013. Views are sought from people regardless of whether such defects in those properties are currently known, unknown or where no such defects have, have arisen to date. The information will be used as part of work to examine the scale and nature of the problem of defects in, ha in housing. And I would encourage all those stakeholders to complete these online surveys to assist in the work of the working group and further details will be published actually next week. The issue of defective concrete block is one that is very well known and due in no small part to the efforts of the homeowners themselves in the west and northwest of Ireland in particular and indeed other parts of the country. Significant enhancements have been announced to the defective concrete block scheme and legislation, legislation underpinning these changes is currently being developed within my department and will be published this session as a matter of priority. And I would again uh, expect the cooperation of the House to be able to get that legislation which is needed to underpin the enhanced scheme through the House as quickly as possible. 2.2 billion euro uh, of, of commitment to those homeowners. And we've currently work undergoing as well with the SCSI in relation to the rate, which I will expect to receive uh, in February or March um, next month or the month after. Today's bill, forms part of a suite of measures to meet our housing needs, to strengthen regulation and oversight while helping those uh, impacted by past uh, mistakes. The main objective of the Regulation of Building Provider Works Bill is to develop and promote a culture of competence, good practice and compliance with the building regulations in the construction sector. Uh, and it will benefit consumers and the general public at large 
and is, in my view, long overdue. The establishment of a robust mandatory statutory register is critical for the development of a culture of competence and compliance in the construction sector. Mandatory statutory regulation is necessary to protect the public from the risks posed by defective buildings, as it's the only way to ensure that builders can only take on work for which they are competent in and registered to undertake. Stronger compliance with building standards and broader building control reform agenda are key and are uh, commitments made by government under Construction 2020 uh, and under Housing for All Construction 2020 and the Action Plan for Jobs, the government signalled its commitment to placing the Construction Industry Register Ireland, or Siri as it's known, on a statutory footing. Statutory registration of builders, as now provided for in this proposed uh, bill, is seen as an essential consumer protection measure, giving those who engage in, register, uh, uh, in a registered builder the, the assurance that they are dealing with a competent and compliant operator. It's also seen as a critical step forward in addressing shadow economic activity in the construction sector and ensuring fairer competition for compliant operators in the industry. The Siri Register was established on a voluntary basis back in 2014 by the CIF and approximately 800 building and contracting entities are currently included on that register. When the register is operating on a statutory footing post the passing of this legislation, it's envisaged that there may be in the order of at least 5,000 entities who will be required to register. The legislation will, provide, uh, will require providers of building services to register with Siri. This will apply to entities and individuals who hold themselves out for consideration as a provider of building works for both residential and non-residential uh, buildings. It does not include employees of such entities but does include sole traders. This will have a significant impact on all sections of the construction industry, from small contractors and craftspeople to larger construction companies. Housing for All sets out an, a target of an average of 33,000 dwellings per annum. The state plans to invest 20 billion euro in the next five years, over 4 billion euro a year, which is the largest investment in housing in the history of the state. Over its lifetime, Housing for All seeks to eradicate homelessness and promote social inclusion. This requires a vibrant and, and innovative construction sector that supports the development of its existing workforce and presents an attractive and sustainable career for those preparing to enter the labour force. This legislation will set out minimum competence requirements for the sector, which will greatly help in the achievement of the shared ambitions for upskilling and reskilling and also underpinning the opportunities under Housing for All of another 27,000 new construction jobs that this plan will actually create. It will ensure greater safety and competency for workers across the construction sector and will aid in making the sector a more attractive career for all involved. It will also complement a number of key measures which government has put in place to strengthen the arrangements in place for the control of building activity following widespread building failures that have emerged in recent years, including the revised building control amendment regs of 2014, the activation of registration arrangements for construction professionals provided for in the Building Control Act of 2007, the development of the nationwide online building control management system, and the move to risk-based standardised inspections by local building control authorities. In addition to these reforms, I'm committed to establishing an independent building standards regulator uh, to strengthen the oversight role of the state with the aim of further reducing the risk of building failures and enha enhancing public confidence in construction related activities and I've received cabinet approval to proceed in the preparation of that legislation. I'll now turn briefly to the main provisions of the bill. It comprises of 64 sections divided into seven parts and two schedules. Part one sets out standard provisions relating to the short title commencement, interpretations, exemptions and general powers to make orders and regulations. It defines a provider of building services, i.e. those who are actually covered under this bill. The legislation will apply to any builder holding themselves out for consideration of receiving payment for carrying out building works which are subject to building regulations. 
It also outlines exemptions from registration, for example, electrical works which are covered under separate legislation. Also exempt are those who do works on their own buildings. This exemption does not apply to any contractor or subcontractor, though engaged. Part 2 provides for the appointment of a registration body, the requirements for such a body, uh, the functions and obligations of the body, and the transfer of functions if required. It provides for the remuneration of boards, registrar and staff, and contains provisions in relation to funding for fees uh, that may be charged by the registration body. It provides for the specification of fees in related to registration and related activities and the publication of an annual report by the registration body in relation to the discharge of its functions under the bill. The registration body requires the consent of the minister to set the registration of the fees. The registration body is required to publish a report annually of its activities under the Act, which shall be laid before the Oireachtas. The Minister may direct the body to provide any other information required, including any document or account prepared by them. It provides that accounts of the registration body shall be audited and published as appropriate. It contains provisions to provide funding from the Exchequer and also policy in relation to Code of Practice. Part 3 provides for the establishment of the Admissions and Registration Board, Committees of the Board and the Appeals Committee. It provides that all members uh, of the Admissions and Registration Board and the Appeals Committee shall be appointed by the Minister and the Minister shall have a majority of nominees on these. It contains appropriate safeguards to ensure the independence and objectivity of the Registration Board and the Appeals Committee. Part 4 provides for the establishment of a mandatory statutory register of providers of building works to which the building regulations apply. The registration body will have delegated responsibility for the day-to-day -day maintenance of the register uh, within the confines of the specific and limited parameters set out in this bill and provides for the registration of builders, including builders specialising in specific building elements and technologies. This will be achieved by establishing different divisions and subdivisions across different elements of building works. The criteria to be used to determine competence required is set out in this part and the criteria will be used to determine the specific criteria required to be considered competent uh, to be registered in each division. Eligibility for registration can be achieved through qualification or experience. I want to be very clear on that or indeed a combination of both. Part 4 also provides that a competent person must fulfil the criteria for registration and outlines the procedures whereby a competent person leaves an entity and how they would be replaced. In addition, this part provides that a subsidiary of the entity may fulfil the competence criteria for registration. Part 5 provides for the operation of the register and outlines prohibitions against operating as a provider of building services whilst not registered. It outlines the application process and the requirements for registration and the renewal of that registration. These include a requirement to complete an induction course, undertake continuous professional development or CPD and provide evidence of tax clearance. This part uh, provides the admissions and regulation uh, or registration board that may grant registration where it's satisfied that the applicant is eligible, is eligible and may refuse registration where it's not satisfied that that is the case. It also provides for appeals of any such decisions. Part 6 provides for the handling of complaints and appeals from applicants in relation to registration decisions and from complainants in relation to activities or conduct of registered members. It outlines the role and powers of the inspector who may investigate the complaint and the roles of the, appeal, of the board, the appeals committee and the High Court in the imposition of sanctions. The Board may impose major sanctions, for example, they may remove or suspend from the register, uh, which are subject to the appeals process and require confirmation by the High Court. Part 7 contains some miscellaneous provisions, including the provision of, of, of offences or for offences and penalties. It provides for publication of sanctions and convictions, arrangements for restoration to the register and transitional arrangements in the event of a change in the appointment of the registration body. Schedule 1 details the provisions applicable to oral hearings held by the Admissions and Registration Board, 
Schedule 2 contains miscellaneous matters concerning the Board of Appeals Committee, including provisions in relation to the tenure of members and the procedures to be observed at meetings. In addition to these parts, one, um, I as, uh, will be bringing forward amendments to the Bill at Committee stage in relation to data processing and governance. Um, these will be in line with the Data Protection Act 2018 and the Data and Governance Act 2019. I'll also bring forward amendments to allow the sharing of information by building control authorities on enforcement and prosecutions with the registration body once it's established. Entry on the register uh, is open to all builders, whether sole traders, partnerships or registered companies, who demonstrate competence in construction at the appropriate level of registration, commit to continuous development of knowledge and building practice, confirm tax compliance, declare any convictions under health and safety or building control legislation in any jurisdiction, not just here in the Republic, have the appropriate public liability insurance and employer liability insurance if it applies and undertake to adhere to a code of conduct and complete the Siri uh, induction module online. The independence and object objectivity of the registration board and the appeals committee will absolutely be critical to its acceptance and success. The number of provisions are included in the bill to uphold uh, the independence and registration system at all times. Although it's proposed the registration body will be delegated uh, the statutory powers and functions to independently operate and maintain the register, in practice the powers is to be given uh, it is to be given, are narrow and prescribed so as to guard against any potential conflicts of interest. Discussions and engagement with industry highlighted re uh, ready acceptance, to be fair, by the sector of the critical role that the register must play in re-establishing public trust in the industry. The administrative and cost burden of the proposed mandatory register on builders, and in particular small builders, was key in the development of the proposed register. In this regard, the level of any fee must be approved by the Minister. Uh, the requirement for continued professional development must be proportionate to the complexity of the work which the builder is registered to carry out. The voluntary register, which has been in operation since 2014, as I said earlier, is approximately 800 registered members. This will increase substantially once the register becomes mandatory, and therefore a transition period will be required to provide sufficient time for builders to adapt to the new obligations. To ensure insofar as possible that the register will not discriminate against builders established in other jurisdictions, my department is engaged with the Department of Enterprise to ensure that the registration requirements for inclusion on the register don't discriminate against those seeking registration from other EU states and to facilitate applications from third countries. These include a requirement that the registration process would be completed online, or maybe, and that work undertaken in other jurisdictions may be submitted to the board to demonstrate the required level of competence that we've set out in this legislation. The minimum competence requirements and CPD obligations will ensure that existing providers of building services continue to upskill as required. The voluntary register, um, as I mentioned, um, excuse me, the establishment of a statutory uh, register requiring minimum competence for providers of building services will support the development of skills required to achieve a number of actions under the Climate Action Plan. The delivery of 33,000 uh, NZEB dwellings per year, the retrofitting of 500,000 homes to building energy rating of B2 by 2030, and the installation of 600,000 renewable energy heating sources in both new and existing buildings. Once the Siri legislation is enacted, the, third, the registration body is nominated, the registration body will incur a substantial pre-commencement establishment cost. To establish the register and enable a smooth operational transition, the Siri registration body will need sufficient funding to establish this statutory regime. An initial grant will be provided of around 1.8 million euro, which will be subject to appropriate governance in accordance with the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform. Um, the management of and accountability of grants of exchequer funds. The registration body is required to submit an annual report to the Minister and will be laid before the Houses of the Oireachtas. Just in conclusion, at Count Corla, I wish to emphasise the importance of this legislation. Statutory registration of builders will be an, ex an essential consumer protection measure, giving those who engage a registered builder the assurance that they are dealing with a competent 
and compliant operator. The establishment of a robust mandatory statutory register is critical for the development of competence and compliance in the construction sector. It is a key regulatory measure of the broader building control reform agenda and to the housing for all objective to deliver quality housing. I look forward to the contribution from colleagues here at second stage and to working with them in the passage of this bill through committee report and remaining stages and indeed into the Shannon. Many thanks.